Hey, it's Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about how to take a good history from a nice patient. So, let's get started. First, we'll talk about the big picture. When a patient comes to you, first thing, you take a history. After you take a history, you perform a physical exam. After you perform the physical exam, you formulate what we call a provisional diagnosis or a differential diagnosis. Okay, this is most likely to be X. It could possibly be Y or Z. How do you tell the difference? We go to the next step, which is the diagnostic tests. And these will include some lab tests, some radiology, and maybe a biopsy. Next, you will confirm your diagnosis and then you start the treatment or the management. So here is the old way and here is the new way or here is how the notes are structured in the exam. History, physical exam, labs and radiology, and then treatment. We can also call this the SOAP note. S for subjective, O is for objective, A assessment, and P is the plan. So subjective is the history. And you need to leave this in the patient's own words. So do not say hypertension because the patient does not know about hypertension. The patient will say high blood pressure. Do not say diabetes mellitus type. The patient will say I have high blood sugar. Do not say uh, hypercholesterolemia. Say high cholesterol. Do not say hematemesis. Say vomiting blood. Do not say hemoptysis. Say the patient is complaining of coughing up blood. Instead of saying dyspepsia, leave it as indigestion, etc., etc. And then the objective is the physical exam. And this includes general exam and special exam. General exam is general. You look at the patient. Oh, he's tall. He's so short, is unbelievable. He's thin. He's obese. After this, you look at the mood of the patient. He looks happy. He looks depressed. He looks ill. He looks well. Then the decubitus, oh, the patient is sitting comfortably in bed, or the patient cannot lie down, or cannot lie down unless there are seven pillows beneath him. The patient is lying on the left side, the patient is lying on his right side, etc. Then you need to do the vital signs. What are the four vital signs? Temperature, arterial blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate. Honestly, you should say pulse instead of heart rate because pulse is more broad and it encompasses the heart rate and rhythm and volume and equality etc after the vital signs you do something called the regional exam you start examining the head the neck the upper extremity the lower extremity the chest the abdomen the neuro etc and then you go to the special physical exam to the system of the complaint hey doctor i have a chest pain we will focus on cardiology Hey doctor, I am coughing up blood. We will focus on pulmonology or chest. Hey doctor, I have tingling and numbness in my feet. We will focus on neurological exam of the lower extremities. After this, and only after this, you start formulating your differential diagnosis. Hey doctor, I'm tired. This could be anemia. This could be fibromyalgia. This could be depression. It could be hypoglycemia etc etc and so on and so forth and then you order labs and radiology you will confirm your diagnosis and then you start the plan history tips history taking involves the technique and symptomatology what is technique how to ask the patient what to ask the patient and in what order okay so in your exam how do you do it correctly first they will give you a case the first thing is to knock on the door this is very important some sort of just oh, hello, hello shut up Knock on the door first. Patients' privacy need to be respected. How many times? Once, uh, the patient will not hear it. Twice, uh, it's noisy because there are many students. Thrice, three times. How about if the patient is not responding? Do it again, three times. If the patient is still not responding, that's a setup. That's a trick. You need to enter the room. Maybe it's an appendicitis and the patient has severe abdominal pain and cannot respond to you. Or maybe the patient is depressed. Okay, medicosis, so I've knocked on the door three times and then I've entered. What should I do? You enter the room and you close the door before talking to the patient, okay? Before revealing, hey, Mr. Mustafa, how is your type 2 diabetes today? Shut up. You've just revealed his private medical information and violated his privacy in front of the entire hospital. Shut up. Don't do it. Close the door behind you before talking. Do not say sir or madam or whatever. Say Mr. or Mrs. and the name. 
The more you repay the patient's name to the patient, the better you'll be able to establish rapport. Then you should introduce yourself to the patient. Just because you know yourself doesn't necessarily mean that the patient knows you. Hey, hey, Mr. Mustafa, uh, my name is so-and-so. I'm a fourth year medical student here at the whatever school this is. And then you ask, hey, Mr. Mustafa, are you comfortable in this room? Can I ask you some questions and then do a physical exam? Is it okay if I write some notes while we're talking? And then you sit down. Where? In front of the patient? Behind the patient? To the left? To the right. Always sit on the patient's right side. With very few exceptions, such as if the patient has neck pain and cannot look to the right side, then you'll go to the left side. If the patient has appendicitis, the patient will usually be in the left decubitus position, so you need to go to the left side. Or if the patient has right-sided hearing loss, he will not be able to hear you. So you go to the left side. Think, people, think. So I'll knock on the door, I'll enter, I close the door, I say hello to the patient and use his name. I introduce myself, I ask three questions, I sit on the patient's right and smile. Okay, how do I ask the patient? Ask open-ended questions. Example, tell me more about your chest pain. This is way better than multiple choice question. Do you think your pain is caused by uh, a heart problem or a lung problem or a stomach? Don't do this. Open-ended questions are the best. And the worst is the a leading question. Oh, so your chest pain. Oh, you have chest pain. Is this chest pain central, dull, achy, has been around for about 20 minutes, increased by exertion and is relieved by rest or nitroglycerin? Does it radiate to your jaw, your left shoulder and left arm, and the first letter of it is angina? Shut up, you just told the patient the diagnosis. Let the patient describe it. Do not ask leading questions. Tell me more about your chest pain. Not, oh, is this chest pain going this way and this way? Shut up, let the patient talk. And then when you write the history, use the patient's own words and not medical terminology. Hey, Mr. Mustafa, you have type 2 diabetes? that has been complicated by wet proliferative diabetic retinopathy, right? The patient does not understand what the flip you're talking about. Hey, how is your blood sugar? Is it high? Is it low? And don't do this. Open-ended question. Do you have high blood sugar? Do you have high blood pressure? Not hypertension, high blood pressure. Use the patient's own words. Next, always, always elucidate what the patient means rather than what he or she says. If the patient says, oh, I'm throwing up blood, the doofus medical student will say, oh, this is hematemesis. How do you know? It could be hemoptysis. The patient did not say, I'm vomiting blood. The patient said, I'm throwing up blood. This could be hematemesis. This could be hemoptysis. So what should I do? Elucidate. What do you mean, Mr. Mustafa? Are you coughing up blood or are you vomiting blood? I am coughing up blood. See, this is very important. Otherwise, you will deal with this case as hematemesis and go with the abdominal exam instead of the chest exam. See, doofus, you need to elucidate what the patient means rather than what he or she says. Hey, Mr. Mustafa, what's bothering you? I am dizzy. What do you mean by dizzy? Like dizzy. So, do you faint and pass out or is the room spinning around you? Oh, the room is spinning around me then it's not dizziness, this is vertigo. Hey, Mr. Mustafa, how can I help you today? What brought you to the hospital today? Oh, I'm having difficulty breathing. The doofus medical students say, oh, oh, this is just a short of breath. It's like a chest uh, or a pulmonology question. No, elucidate what the patient means. Hey, Mr. Mustafa, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by you're unable to breathe? Do you feel short of breath? Do you feel chest tightness? Oh, yeah, 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 chest tightness. It's as if an elephant is sitting on my chest, then this is cardiac chest pain. It's not lung, dork. Next, do not go into history taking with an agenda in mind. So the patient saying fatigue, oh, I know, it's gonna be anemia. How do you know you haven't asked anything? So it could be depression. It could be hypothyroidism. It could be fibromyalgia, etc. So do not go into history taking with an agenda in mind. You will never know the diagnosis until you finish the history and the physical exam. Only then will you get close to the diagnosis. Because if you go with an agenda such as anemia, you will ask some weird questions. Oh, hey, Mr. Mustafa, have you ever uh, had bleeding per rectum? Have you ever had uh, bright red blood on toilet paper? Did your father die from colon cancer? 
You will ask only questions about knee. Don't do this. You ask all questions to all patients, no matter what. Then you will discover. Next, the history is always about one complaint. Hey, Mr. Mustafa, what brought you to the hospital today? Hey, doctor, I have tingling and numbness. I am paralyzed. I have chest pain and I have asthma. Uh, this is nonsense. You have to narrow it down. Okay, out of these four problems, what is bothering you the most? The chest pain, doctor. Then this is a history taking for chest pain. So what, will, what do I do with the other three symptoms? It depends. If they are related, write them in chronological order with the same case. For instance, the case could be about mitral stenosis with some atrial fibrillation and shorts of breath from the pulmonary edema. Yep, you write them down in the chronological order. If the complaints are not related, for example, tingling and numbness with heavy menstrual blood, and then you're sure it's, they are not related, you write two separate soap notes, two separate histories for each one. And you go with the most important one first. After taking history, you summarize. Okay, Mr. Mustafa, so uh, I understand that you have chest pain today, and this chest pain is central. It increases by exertion and decreases by rest or taking nitroglycerin, and it radiates to your jaw and your arm, and you're so worried that this is a heart attack because your dad died from a heart attack. Is this an accurate summary of your situation? Yes, doctor, that's impressive, actually. Do you have any other questions? Do you want to tell me anything? Anything. You can tell me anything. After this, you wash your hands. Remember to wash your hands before starting the physical exam. Otherwise, don't touch me. How do we do the physical exam? We have general and we have special general. We have overview, vital signs, and regional. After the regional, there is the special or the localized. Overview, the build, the look, the decubitus, and the middle function. The build is the patient, very tall, could be gigantism. So short, could be dwarfism. How about the weight? Is the patient obese? Could be diabetes. Could be Cushing syndrome. Could be huge ascites. Is the patient underweight? Could be cachexia due to cancer, anorexia due to cancer, or due to a eating disorder. Toxemia such as tuberculosis, those patients are very thin. Thyrotoxicosis is another possibility. Then the look. Does the patient look well, look ill, look depressed, look comatose, whatever. Decubitus. Is the patient comfortable sitting down? Is the patient lying on his left side, on his right side? The patient is lying on his belly, etc. Then you do the vital signs. Temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate. What's the normal temperature? 37. Blood pressure, 120 over 80. How about 110 over 80? It's also normal. It's even better. Heart rate, 60 to 100. Respiratory rate, 12 to 18. Regional exam, you do everything except the system of complaint. Mr. Mustafa, what's the problem today? Oh, chest pain? So I do everything. I do the head, neck, upper extremity, lower extremity, all of these very quickly. And then I leave the heart to the end because I'll focus on the heart. And then the heart, what should you do on the heart? Inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation, special test. In case of the heart, there is no percussion for the heart. There is percussion for the lung. There is percussion for the abdomen. There is no percussion for the heart. SOAP, S-O-A-P, A assessment, differential diagnosis and diagnosis and why? What's the most likely diagnosis? Oh, I think this is uh, ischemic heart pain or like uh, angina or infarction. Why is this? Oh, because the patient has central chest pain because this pain increases with exercise, decreases with rest and nitroglycerin, radiates the jaw, radiates to the left shoulder and left arm. And because the patient is obese, has high blood sugar, has high blood pressure, has high cholesterol, works as a government employee in an office, so sedentary lifestyle, and he has family history of cardiac problems. His dad died in a heart attack, his mom died in a heart attack, etc. If you want to get the highest score ever, don't say that's the diagnosis, say four types of diagnosis, etiological, anatomical, functional, and complication. For example, this patient could be having mitral stenosis, which is an endocardial disease, by the way. Due to rheumatic fever, this is the etiological diagnosis. So we have the etiological diagnosis and we have the anatomical diagnosis. Functional, it has been causing left-sided heart failure. And complications, this mitral stenosis is complicated by atrial fibrillation and pulmonary hypertension. SOAP, what's the plan? Diagnostic test, some lab, some radiology, maybe a biopsy, and then management is the treatment. In the next video, we'll dive into deeper details about how to take a history. So, I'll see you in the next time.